Hello, and welcome to this vSuite version 0.4 video tutorial. And in this video tutorial, I'm going to cover the three main ways that we can simulate artificial lighting with the Livy component of the vSuite using radiance uh, in the background. Um, the first way, which I'll cover, which is probably not a way you would generally use, but I'll just cover it for um, completeness, is that we can create mesh geometry within the Blender scene and we can associate a radiance light material with that mesh geometry. And then that mesh geometry will then act as a source of illumination within the scene. So um, in this very simple kind of almost empty scene I've got here, I've just got a camera and I've got a plane and I've already subdivided that plane up and I've associated the light sensor material with that plane. So this plane will now act as a sensing surface for our simulation. So I could now just create, for example, a cube. I'd lift that up a bit and scale that down a bit. And I can now associate with this cube material a light, uh, sorry, I can associate with this cube a light material. So if I go to my material panel over here, new material, uh, call it light source. And now I can simply down here within my Livy radiance material type, I can select light instead of the default plastic. Once I've selected light, I can choose how to specify the color of that light. I can either apply an RGB color, or I could apply a color temperature, which is controlled by this slider here. So 3,500 Kelvin would be a fairly warm, uh, fairly warm white. So once I've done that, um, I can simply then go to my node setup, and I've got here a typical standard Livy node setup, a VI location node feeding into my Livy context node, although I'm using no sky type here because I want to see the influence of the artificial lighting, not natural lighting, and my Libby geometry, which I should re-export as I've changed my geometry, and I've got my Libby simulation node. So if I just preview this scene from the perspective of the camera, I might just center that slightly. If I now preview that, you can see my cube is a source of illumination and it is illuminating the plane underneath. And if I change my color temperature to something sort of a more bluish white, re export, preview again. and I get a much more whiter, bluish-white colour. Um, so that's more or less everything you need to know about introducing mesh lighting um, into the scene. Um, we can also change the intensity here of the light in watts per steradian per meter squared. So if I stick that up to 10, Export again, preview. I should now see a much brighter illumination on the plane below. Um, but I think that covers all the options in my um, in my light settings. But it's one thing to bear in mind when using a mesh as a lighting source within Radiance. If I was to take this cube down and have it so that only less than the top half of these side faces are actually above this plane. If I export that now and preview, we'll see that only the top surface of the cube, um, well, the top surface and the side surfaces of the cube are sort of look like a source of illumination, but these side surfaces are not illuminating the sort of ground plane, 
we have around the cube. And that's because the lighting as distributed around the scene is actually coming purely from the center point of each of these faces. So if I move the cube up slightly, so the center point is now above that ground plane, we should see now that these side faces do now illuminate this plane. But if I alter the um, exposure slightly, you can see that the source of illumination from the cube is coming purely from the center point of each face. So um, this kind of technique works fine where the lighting source is fairly distant from the things that it's going to illuminate. And then this slight spatial sort of inaccuracy of the mesh lighting doesn't matter too much. I can go into my cube and I can subdivide the faces of that cube, um, for example. And now a light source will come out from each center of each face. So if I export that in preview, we get now a more, what looks like a more even illumination on the plane from the cube. But again, if I change my exposure, we can see the illumination is actually coming from the center of these now smaller faces. And the more faces we have, if we have a lot of faces that are acting as sources of illumination, it will slow down the simulation quite significantly. So that's just to cover how we can do mesh-based lighting, which, like I say, you may not actually use when doing lighting simulations. Um, the next thing we can do is we, we can actually add a lamp within the Blender scene. And I usually use a spot lamp for this so I can see what direction that lamp is facing. And that lamp is by default facing downwards. And to that lamp, I can associate what's called an IES file. An IES file is a text file that describes how bright a light is from the different angles that you can look at it from. And these IES files are released by manufacturers of lights and luminaires uh, for the purposes of simulation and analysis. So um, you can go to manufacturers' websites or if you do a Google search for IES files, you will have links to manufacturers' websites. And for specific luminaires and lights, they will produce a specific IES file. And we can associate an IES file with this Blender lamp. So with the lamp selected, make sure you're in your lamp panel over here. And in the V-Suite Object Definition tab, we've got this button to select IES file. Now, I got one earlier from the internet. Um, one thing to bear in mind, when I first downloaded it from the internet, there was a space in the file name. And Radiance and Livy and the V-Suite won't like that. So you'll get a warning saying, this won't work, there's a space in the file name, so just remove that file name. And that also applies to the directory that the IS file is kept in. So make sure there are no spaces anywhere within the folder, uh, path, or the file name itself. So I associate that IS file with the lamp. And this is, um, I can't remember exactly, I think it's a 10 watt, um, LED spot lamp, um, which is pointing downwards by default. Um, and because the direction of our blender lamp is also downwards, we should find the illumination landing on our plane down below. So if I now export that, I can preview that. We can see now I've got this uh, illumination on the plane below from this IES lamp. And if I want to, because I have this set up as a calculation plane, I can also press calculate. And I can do a display of that and bring up my usual uh, numerical point visualization for, at the moment, Illuminance Lux. I have my legend and uh, I should have a little table here. I think that's not working at the moment because I've 
um, gone and moved the path to the uh, yes, if I just get rid of that, this is because of some changes that I made. Let me just correct that while I think about it. It's just because of some development I did. There we go. Um, so, as we had with our lighting, natural lighting analysis, we have a legend. Uh, we can bring up tabular statistics for the results plane that we have selected. And um, we can change the color of that, etc. Um, so, if I was to rotate this lamp, so let's move it that could re export that calculate that I see I'm now my lighting source is offset so um, we could if we wanted duplicate that lamp export again Etc. So it's a pretty quick, uh, easy way of seeing what sort of real world lamps and real world luminaires will deliver in terms of lux and uh, so on. So that's the second way. Uh, the third way is that we can create a mesh, and I'm going to create a plane. Uh, I'm going to scale that up a little bit. That'll do. And I can subdivide that plane. And um, you'll see in more detail how to do these uh, surface subdivisions in the uh, natural lighting and the shadow study tutorials. Um, but if I subdivide that plane and I make sure that my normals are pointing downwards, then this plane can act, and the faces of this plane can act as an array of IES lights. So this is intended to make it quick to set up a, a regular grid of lights um, within larger interior spaces. So that plane, if I go to my object data panel, and in my vSuite object definition, if I select light array, I can now again select an IES file to associate with that plane. I'll pick the same one. Um, I've got basically the same um, options here regarding the IES file. Whether the, any geometry within the IES file, uh, any geometric description within the IES file uh, is in meters or feet or inches, generally the meters. Um, the strength of the IS, so I can alter that to introduce dimming, for example, if I want to. I could animate that as well if I so chose. Um, and again, if I want to alter the colour of the lamp, I can do so either with RGB or with a temperature colour. But I'm just going to leave that as default. So now if I export that and I calculate again, we can now see that these lamps are delivering a much wider source of illumination across the scene. If I bring that down a bit, export again, we start to see, just about see, each individual lamp. Um, if I redisplay that, now my 3D level turned on. You can just about see each individual lamp a little bit more. If I brought it down further, export, calculate. So 
again, it's a fairly easy way of uh, setting up a regular grid of lights within the scene. And once again, if I was to rotate that, export, calculate, display, find that my array of lights now picks up that rotation. Um, so those are three main ways that we can use um, or simulate artificial lighting within the B-Suite. Um, and I think that is everything. Okay, thanks for watching.